when you practice being present and you observe your thoughts without judgment, you can recognize the negative thought patterns and then consciously choose to reframe them. So that's where anxiety comes from. It's really like having not great thoughts, whether it's about yourself or somebody else or a situation you're in, just practicing that mindfulness and say, wait a sec, where am I going with this negative train right now? I don't need to do that. And then find the patterns when it happens. Hey, I'm Jade Ellison, a multi-passionate creative based out of New York City who's obsessed with personal development and anything business from marketing, branding, creating online programs to launches and helping you step into your true self so that you can share your gifts with the world. Gain insights with manifesting, creating life on purpose and get ready to elevate yourself in ways that will surprise even you. Included in your weekly dose of inspiration, get ready to be entertained, uplifted, and encouraged to take action with simple and easy to apply tips, tools, and strategies that fit into your busy daily life, sprinkled with some woo-woo along the way. From embracing your confidence to mastering success habits, setting achievable goals, and ways to harness positive mindsets and beliefs so that you can kick self-doubt and your inner critic to the curb where they belong. Whatever's on the topic call sheet, I'll help you navigate the raw, messy, and sometimes hilarious truths of achieving success, abundance, and happiness, all while encouraging you to become the best version of yourself. So think of me as your go-to girlfriend, talking over some coffee, getting real, and giving you some amazing advice to go from hot mess to thriving success. This is the Uber Savvy Life and Biz Podcast. If you're like me and you're on the go, sometimes you want to jump straight into the strategy. That's why I created this bonus recap for you. So grab a pen and a pad, or if you're driving, be careful. Just listen and tune to the points that you're like, ooh, I'm definitely going to do that. So just to recap, the three easy ways to overcome anxiety. The first way was to calm your inner storm, and that's related to your physical anxiety. Doing different types of breathing methods, such as box breathing, which I shared, you could inhale for four counts, hold it for four counts, exhale for four counts, hold that for four counts, and then repeat that two, three, four times, depending on your level of anxiety. And that will really help regulate and reduce that anxiety and calm your nervous system. And that's an easy one that you could do, whether you're at work or you're driving, or you're walking to work. You don't need to be alone to do that. So box breathing is something that I use often. You could also do diaphragmic breathing. That's known as deep belly breathing. And that involves deeply breathing into your diaphragm, allowing your lungs to fully expand and then breathing it all out. And that promotes relaxation and reduces that flight or fight response. This style of breathing is also associated with a lot of yoga classes and having a great yoga instructor will really help you breathe in and out through each of those poses and really helps to balance your nervous system and your body. Another style of breathing is alternate nostril breathing, which is Nadi Sodahana, which is a yogi style technique involving inhaling through one nostril while blocking the other and then switching sides. Because this style of breathing helps to balance your left and right hemispheres of your brain and it promotes calmness and mental clarity. So this style of breathing, the alternate nostril breathing, Nadi Sodahana, I would definitely do that. Maybe when you're in your own private setting. I don't know if you want to do that in your car. I guess you could do that in your car or when you're at work when nobody's around. And then another way to calm your inner storm with this physical type of anxiety is to walk or lightly jog. Engaging in a brisk walk or a light jog releases endorphins, which are just natural mood lifters. And that physical activity will help to dissipate any built up tension in the body as well. You could also do yoga or stretching. There's places called Stretch Lab here in the States or any style of stretching. It's assisted stretching or yoga, doing yoga classes, because gently stretching and doing yoga poses will promote relaxation and release muscle tension. And that's really what anxiety is in terms of like physical anxiety. It also encourages your mindful movement, which could divert your mind from those anxious thoughts. And I know that I often do any type of stretching or yoga throughout the day, even if it's just like one or two poses, just kind of like move those thoughts out of my mind. You could also shake it up and dance it out. 
which is a bonus chapter in my upcoming book. And that's basically like a fun way to have self-expression and release that pent up energy. And that's just another fun way of getting yourself to move to alleviate that physical anxiety. Also, you could do an aerobic workout to like a YouTube video and put on your own favorite music and just make it fun because it's whatever you want to do that will help you in your own personal way, get it out of your body <laughs> because that's really the goal of this particular episode. And the second way to easily overcome anxiety is connecting authentically with others. And this is related to social anxiety. So put yourself out there, share your personal experiences, open up about what you're going through, what emotions you're having, because when you do that, you create a safe space, not only for yourself, but for others to do the same. And that really authentically helps to deepen connections. And you could share what you're going through, whether personally, in a relationship, with work, because you never know, maybe they have some advice to help you move past that. And practicing this type of vulnerability, you could ask open-ended questions. It encourages meaningful conversations like, how are you? How has your day been? What good things have happened to you lately? I love to ask that because that throws people off. And I don't do it to throw people off. Because a lot of times you ask somebody how they're doing. Oh, same old. No, you don't want it to be same old. You want to know what new things happen. Because when you help somebody see that new things are happening to them, it helps them kind of like wake up and be like, oh, good things are happening. And that encourages more meaningful conversations by asking those style of questions instead of like yes, no questions. And it shows that interest genuinely in the other person with their thoughts and feelings. And then being honest about your feelings. I shared that already. Being vulnerable and sharing how you really feel about a situation, even if it involves like feeling discomfort, because that could lead to more of an authentic connection with somebody. You might be at work and you might be put on a schedule on a day that you have other personal things that you want to do. And if you're not speaking up and letting your manager know or the owner know, hey, I have something that really matters to me, it might feel uncomfortable for you to share with them. But how would they know if you have something else going on in your life unless you share it? And then they could help adjust the schedule. And then you will realize that feeling of discomfort was because of your own uncertainty and not really seeing it from a greater perspective of them being able to help you. Another way to connect authentically with others is the power of active listening. Maintain eye contact and have good body language. Because it shows that when you're open and your torso is facing them and you're focused and you're looking into their beautiful eyes, it shows that you're engaged and attentive in the conversation and it makes them want to be engaged and attentive in the conversation that you are having with them as well. And then you can reflect back what you hear or paraphrase back what you hear them saying because that shows that you're really actively listening and that you care and value their perspective. And when you do that, it just really helps to deepen that connection and alleviate that social anxiety. And definitely with the power of active listening, avoid preparing your response or interrupting others. I used to be horrible at this, but because of the different types of sales training I have gone through, I have shared that when I was in college, I had done makeup and then I went into pharmaceutical sales and the pharmaceutical industry I would say has the top sales training in terms of getting yourself to understand and listen and then provide the value of whatever it is that the product that they're training you on is. You know, I know how important it is to listen instead of formulating your response because then you really understand what's being said. And by encouraging this vulnerability and practicing this active listening, you could really foster these deeper, more meaningful connections and combat social anxiety. And I'm not saying that you have that, but for any of you who are listening who do have social anxiety, when you connect more authentically with others and start with just one person, I'm not saying if you're introverted, go out and make 10 new friends, but go out and talk to the one person at work who maybe you haven't spoken to before. And then you'll realize how much more things in common that you have. And the last and third easy way to overcome anxiety is to master your inner dialogue, which is related to mindset anxiety or mental anxiety. 
and really is your ultimate mind power. And I feel like basically all anxiety is a mental game that we play with ourselves daily. And all anxiety does kind of stem from our thoughts and then manifest in different ways, whether it be physically or our social anxiety. So when you could have your ultimate mind power with this third easy way, it will help to alleviate anxiety in the other areas of your life. And you could challenge negative thoughts. And that's through cognitive restructuring. That's identifying and challenging the negative thought that you have, those negative thought patterns, and replacing them with more balanced and positive interpretations. And that's what Martin Siegelman's work in positive psychology emphasizes with this specific technique. Another way that you could challenge these negative thoughts is practicing mindfulness and awareness. Just being present in the moment and observing your thoughts without judgment and just being able to recognize those negative thought patterns, you're able to consciously choose to reframe them. So as I've shared, when I have these weird negative thoughts that creep up or these anxious thoughts that creep up, whether I'm sitting or I'm standing in an area of my house or I'm at work, I physically move my body to another area because we're like antennas. You know, if you could picture us being antennas, there was this movie a long time ago with Scarlett Johansson. I can't remember the name, but I remember seeing like streams of energy above all the people or she was able to see the streams of energy. So if you look at yourself as like an antenna, it's kind of like what thought patterns are you tapping into and just shifting your body to even another physical location allows you to kind of like interrupt that negative thought pattern and then consciously choose to reframe it with something more positive. You could also use affirmations. I've shared this so many times. Using positive affirmations to counteract any negative self-talk and repeating empowering statements to affirm your worth, your capabilities, your potential. And then you could stop it before you go down negative town and turn that around right now because you have the power to focus your mind and you have the power within you to focus your attention on things that matter. It's a habit, of course, like anything else, like eating healthy or going to the gym or practicing mindfulness or having great communications with others or being a good friend. It's a habit. You have to give to your mind and fuel yourself with positive things, just like you have to give your body healthy foods to feel good. You have to give your mind good thoughts to feel good which goes into amplifying your appreciation. So this is another way to master your inner dialogue. Instead of just having scattered thoughts, being more conscious with your thoughts, and this is how you could really do it in a more practical way. You could use the digital notes app in your smartphone and take down any notes of good moments that happen throughout your day. And it's more of like a modern approach, I guess, than like the gratitude journaling. I love writing. And this is a super easy approach in terms of amplifying your appreciation. You could also use your voice memos or that recording app, depending on what smartphone you have, and just record any voice memos or any audio notes that express appreciation for specific things or experiences that you just went through. Because hearing your own voice helps to enhance that emotional impact of your own personal reflections. And even when funny things happen, I love to use the voice app and speak in different accents into the voice app and remind myself like good things that happened. Because when you listen to your own voice, you're usually in a happier place. And then when you're like in a lower mood or you're stressed or you're anxious and you want to uplift your mood, and then you can listen to your own voice that you recorded and the energy of that mood will help uplift you and bring you back to that feeling of that funny or that good moment that you remembered and really kick out anxiety anytime it creeps in. And then you could also use vision boards or those virtual vision boards like I've shared or do a photo collage. You could actually create those images and quotes and symbols that represent things that you're grateful for. And you could compile these and use this anytime you want to increase and amplify your appreciation. I mean, we have so many photos on our phones. So next time it's a rainy Sunday, you could sit on the couch with a cozy blanket and just start organizing the photos on your phones in different albums, your friend's album, your foodie album of fun food photos. If you take photos of food like I do, you could also do different screenshot albums, favorite vacation albums, 
And then you can go back and take a look anytime you need that boost of appreciation to move yourself out of anxiety. And I also have this new segment, which I've been doing, the Uber Savvy Fun Tip. And these are four actions to easily overcome anxiety. One is the BS game. You know, the game that we played when we were kids. I think it was like a card game or you tell a story and your friends or the other players would have to call bullshit. Well, you could do that to get rid of your anxiety ridden thoughts. Simply write them down on a piece of paper or a post-it wherever you are. Write the things that you're anxious about. But instead of calling bullshit, you can call it the bull shredder. I know that sounds silly, but you could call it the bull shredder, meaning you rip them up in pieces after you write them down and say, nope, I don't have room for you in my mind. Get out and throw it in the garbage. Because once you get it out of your mind and throw it out, it's like one less thing that's building up inside of you and giving you that feeling of anxiety that's unnecessary and you could move past. Another action you could do is silly salutations. So instead of yoga poses, you could do superhero poses or just do confident poses and stand upright because our body posture has an effect on our emotions. And you can try different poses and even add some music to break out and dance because when you could make it not so serious and you're like, oh, I'm going to get this out of my body, it gets out of your body. Another thing you could do is creation mode. Get a coloring book. Get an adult coloring book. An adult coloring book. That sounds like really funny. This is not an R-rated segment. I'm talking about like <laughs> those coloring books that have like those specific patterns, those symmetrical patterns. You could color, stay within the lines because when you do that and you focus on creating something or coloring, it activates a different part of your brain and it helps refocus that energy to alleviate that anxiety. Another thing you could do is kick it or row it out. So there's fun group fitness classes. I've shared this multiple times. You could do something called class pass. I believe it's in the States and you sign up for whatever membership level that works for your lifestyle. And you could do four classes, six classes. I think some membership levels, you could do 12 classes a month, depending what you sign up for. And there's different types of classes. There's kickboxing classes. There's yoga classes. There's rowing classes. I know there's this place called Row House out here on the East Coast. And there is another kickboxing place that's also part of Class Pass. But you could look, whether you're in a major city or you're in a local suburb, and see what Class Pass businesses are available and decide, is this something that you want to do? And I've used that multiple times in New York City, in Miami, in New Jersey, in Los Angeles. One membership, wherever you are, usually will cover you in other locations that you go. So if you travel, you could stay active. So you could use any of those four actions to easily overcome anxiety and add that to your toolbox. By incorporating these strategies into your daily life, you'll be well on your way to manifesting a life free from the constraints of anxiety, whether physical, social, or that mindset anxiety. Because remember, you could do this and it's just one step, one thought at a time. And I'd love to leave you with this incredible quote. The greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. William James, American philosopher and psychologist. So I'm curious, which one of those are you going to apply to your life right now? Circle one on your paper, the notebook pad that resonates with you the most and apply that in the next 24 to 48 hours. I know that what I've shared has helped me and hopefully it will make a positive impact and do the same for you. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Uber Savvy Life and Biz podcast. That was awesome. I appreciate you. Stay committed to your vision, take consistent action and know that great things are on the other side of that door because remember, only you hold the key to unlock your dream life. So why not start today? I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Can I just say you're awesome. You just finished an episode of the Uber Savvy Life and Biz podcast. If you like this episode, feel free to leave a nice review and rate it five stars if you found it helpful. But if not, please don't rate it four stars. Just ignore this part. However, if you did like it, make sure you share it with a friend who may find some value in the topics discussed today. Be sure to share it with them because you never know who you could uplift. Also, if you want more, check out the show notes in the description, which would include any links that may have been mentioned in this episode. Are you 
still listening? Are you waiting for a blooper reel? That'd be a really fun idea to throw in the times. But seriously, are you tired of foggy mornings? Go to jadeellison.com to grab your ultimate caffeine-free boost to supercharge your mornings for success. That's right, your empowered morning mindset checklist. Y'all, great day is just a thought away. You guys ready? Are you ready for the noise to be brought? This is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be good. It's going to be a great day. There was a commercial a few years back. Oh my gosh, my hubby and I, we just recited that over and over again. It was, gosh, I don't remember, but this couple went on a trip. They were in a hotel room and it was like their first trip away. And apparently there was like construction going on right outside of their window. And the husband was just, he played a really sarcastic fella. He was funny. The guy who was cast for the husband part, he goes, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a great day. So my hubby and I say that anytime shit hits the fan, we're like, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a great day. <laughs> All right, let's do this to this. La 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 la. All right, cool. 12, 12, baby. I wish for the one take wonder and first go. Let's see. <laughs> 